Hi and welcome to another edition of Steve Moore on Selects. We've got the launch of night racing this Friday at Mooney Valley. Manicato Stakes Group 1 action, Steve. Great to be back under lights at the Valley. Certainly is, uh, Sean, and congratulations to the Mooney Valley Racing Club because they've worked at making these night programs more spectacular with better quality racing. They've achieved that. They've started to achieve it over the last couple of years, particularly with the Manicato and the JRA Cup, uh, JRA Cup Group 3 for the first time. This year, no surprise, Elka Pop last year won the race, went on to the Herbert Power, shocking ran third, the Melbourne Cup winner. And in recent years, we've seen the likes of Maldivian, El Segundo, Master O'Reilly graduated from this to run such a great race in the Caulfield Cup. So it's become one of the definitive spring races, the JRA Cup and the Manicato. Well, it's intriguing this year, isn't it? Fantastic lineup. All right, well, let's get cracking into our preview here. The Manicato Stakes is the Group 1 event. Um all eyes on Haylist. Uh, can he continue this stunning form? Well, I think he probably can. Um, barrier one might be the tiniest of question marks. I would think that he would be uh, unbeatable maybe from four or five. From gate one, he's going to have one or two options, kick up and hold the fence and lead, which I suspect he has the natural gate speed to do, or he's got the two other speed horses immediately drawn outside him in bank robber and reward for effort. He might gamble, take the sit, look to get out at the right time. I suppose the racing pattern's going to be some sort of factor there. Uh, four metres, two meetings back where you had to be inside on pace. And then last uh, time, of course, back to the true, and they were running on in probably that similar part of the track. Now, the rail's three metres Friday night. Maybe it will suit those just sitting on the speed, maybe one off the fence, but uh, that remains to be seen. Uh, the Valley track has generally played pretty well, and, uh, and I'm really looking forward to this meeting. Look, barring some misadventure, I think he'll probably beat them again. Hey, list, I think you have to accept his record at face value, and I think you have to believe what we saw last time and take it at face value. Alrighty, so your selections uh, have been on screen there. Let's have a look at the JRA Cup. You touched upon how good this race is. Um, we see precedence go around here, Linton as well. A couple of horses that are still in contention trying to get starts in these upcoming Cups. I think uh, precedence is the best bet on the program, uh, particularly each way or one by three. I think his couple of runs this time in have been spectacular. He comes back half a notch in grade here. I like the fact that he's drawn a middle gate. He's one of those staying horses who can either settle in the first three or four if desired. He can settle a, further, a touch further back. So he's got plenty of options from that middle gate. And if you recall, last time in third up, went to the middle distance, won by seven lengths. Admittedly, this is a better race uh, this time around. But then when he stepped up in distance, he kept holding that form. I think he's a legitimately good stayer who might progress to better things this spring. And he's clearly the one to beat in what's a competitive race. You touched on Linton. Uh, he'll run well. Avienus the mayor. Well, her effort, of course, in the stock stakes was spectacular. Mm. And she's in the mix again despite drawing out. But I'm pretty keen on precedence. Champagne Stakes is for the three-year-old fillies over the 1,200 metre distance. And uh, what a fantastic line-up here. Military Rose, Chance by Solar Charged. Certainly is. Uh, you've touched on the top three in the market there. I like Military Rose. Uh, coming back from the Dane Hill, of course, on the heavy track at Flemington. And there were a few reports that, A, she might have been a fraction underdone for that, and B, that Gillian Heinrich was concerned about the state of the track. And now, barring some extraordinary event in the next 24 hours, we're going to have a pretty good track for the Valley tomorrow night. I think she can tuck behind the other two who are renowned for their sheer speed and sheer speed only, Solar Charged and Chance By. I think she'll get the run of the race, Military Rose, and she's clearly the one to beat. Uh, I think a couple... He'll sit off the speed, Lone Rock and Jesse's Girl, pending the pattern. If they do happen to be swooping by the end of the night, I would certainly respect those two at a bit of odds. But I think uh, Military Rose is the top pick. All right, you mentioned that precedence was your best bet on the program. What about your best each way? Best each way, I think, is uh, Falvalon's Dream, race four, number four. Uh, tremendous speed in this race. Uh, you've got probably one key speed runner here in a little volcanic. Who knows how good she might be. Um, had a long break, three from three, but there's a stack of speed, and most of the speed comes from horses who are first up. I just wonder whether the pressure might get to a couple of them, might set the race up for a closer, and Felvalon's dream is hard and fit, one of only a couple in the race, with race fitness perfectly drawn. I don't think she'll miss each way, Felvalon's dream. Looking forward to that race, the first of our 55-second challenge races. What about your best, Ruffy? We haven't touched upon the uh, the start stakes, the uh, the group two for the three-year-olds over the mile, but you like one at odds? I do. I like a Lundy for, for Pat Carey. Um, he ran a terrific race, of course, in the lead-up at Mooney Valley at the last meeting when the blinkers went on. 
but he was fired up, ran through the first half incredibly quickly, was not in the best part of the track and had the temerity to hold on and run fourth. Now, he's uh, $35 when I last looked and uh, so often these roughies at good odds that you fancy a bit run terrific fourths or fifths. But at the $35, he's worth having something on. The blink has come off tonight. I think he'll tuck behind the speed this time. I think his run there was terrific. Some of his runs through his last prep certainly say he can measure up to a race of this level, and I think he's got a good chance of big odds. Worth having something on. All righty. Well, there's Steve's selections there for the first night of night racing at Mooney Valley Grand Final Eve. Going to be a great program. Look forward to seeing you there. Yeah, I'll be there. It's a fantastic program. Great that we've got Canterbury on board in New South Wales, of course, giving some real depth to the night's racing. Weather's looking good and it's a great program. I'll be there. Looking forward to it. Fantastic. We can find all of Steve's selections in this week's edition of Best Bets. You can pick up Best Bets at your local news agency. Stay tuned for more news.